This is Anthony Kilner of Supernal Magazine with our Supernal Magazine interview series. And we've got a mum, uh, Bridget Brocklebank. Uh, thank you for joining us, Bridget, and uh, having a chat on Supernal Magazine interview series. Pleasure. Great to be here. So we're talking about uh, kids' mental health at the moment uh, in the next issue of the magazine. And you're all connected with parents with uh, questions and I think is a very worthy um, discussion point on that, you know, in a little bit. But um, give us a little bit of information about who is Bridget. So our people that watch the video sort of get a bit of a handle on, on who you are and what you're doing. Okay, so um, I'm actually a Kiwi. I'm from New Zealand, um, but I spent uh, the last 20 years in London and we moved to Sydney about uh, two to three years ago. And uh, we've got twin boys, they're 11. Um, they're at a school here, a boys' school here in um, Sydney. And I am um, prior to COVID, I have always been, well, for a long time, um, in the business of health and wellness, holistic health and wellness around mental health for mums, because um, that was very much part of my journey, um, having depression as a mum. But now I'm, so I'm very, always very mindful of it. And I'm very, you know, I have a lot of empathy for people who have these struggles with their mental health. So I, I've never really experienced circumstantial depression, but I, I um, fully acknowledge that there's a lot of that going on right now with regard to what's happening. Mm -hmm. And um, so but when it comes to children, um, I have, yeah, I think um, I've been, I've always been mindful of that. But um, with regard to what's happening right now, I and, and my children, I am, I don't think they, I know so many children who have been um, affected by this and who will be affected by this for years to come. Um, but I've been very real with my children. Um, I believe that, you know, like we can get, you know, adults and children can be, can go down a dark, into a dark place with the mental health if they're, um, you know, their source of information is government and media, which is a lot of fear mongering. And we can so easily, um, yeah, get into that um, dark place. If that, yeah. So I am very real in our home and I'm very real with my boys with my opinions and encouraging them to be, you know, free thinkers. And it's like, I know this is what they're telling us, but do you think that's, do you think that's real? Do you think that's actually happening? And, you know, so I, encourage that I encourage them to ask questions and um yeah so that's how I got involved with parents with questions because <laughs> that at the very beginning I was a very concerned parent I didn't have so many questions I just knew in in my heart that this was not going in a good direction and I'm you know having been in holistic health for a long time I I, um, you know, I think it's up to every parent how they choose to look after their children. And um, I'm very proud of how I've looked after my, my boys and, and when they've been unwell and how I've managed that and how I've treated them. And um, I mean, so they've always had the most outstanding attendance record at school, but they just never sick. It really blows my mind. But if they, on the odd occasion that they have, like, you know, I know what to do that I use tools that feel right for me um and have always been um they've served us very well so um so to have that taken away from us or to feel like it's been taken away is for a mother just incredibly hard and I think that's the greatest mistake the government can do is come between that like between a mother and a child and try and take that away and so um so that's when I so when the parents with questions movement started I just thought oh, this is great like we I need to get behind something like this to um you know and, and pair up with other like-minded parents who are feeling the same the same pressure there's you know the same all those emotions and um so yeah, hugely 
grateful to um, Adam for starting that because I just, you know, it was around that time where I just thought we need something big. Like we need something, like everything is being so big and heavy right now. We need something big on our side that we can, you know, push back with or just, you know, balance things out. So um, I, um, yeah, I've, I've, you know, helped deliver their, you know, their flyers to as many homes as possible just to encourage parents to ask questions because a lot of parents are in that position of um you know believing like this is this is a um well that they need to get their child vaccinated and like well do you you know this is the questions we want to encourage them to ask um and because what's really concerning for me is you know like my, my children like they, my children have had their you know their standard um, jabs when they were younger and um but never did they have to have like one after the other so often that's a real concern for me especially for something that doesn't really affect children which is what so many doctors are saying like it's just, you know um so uh i am very um so that that's my big question like okay so we why should you know why don't we wait for um you know, we've got just this continual booster situation is the biggest concern right now. Mm-hmm. Um, so I'm not like this, is, and also what, you know, these labels the media are putting on people like, um, oh, that is misinformation and, oh, you're an anti-vaxxer and, oh, they've been so misused, these words. And it really concerns me because it's really created this great division in humanity. Um, well, you know, who decides if, you know, like the, the whole trust the science and the misinformation, like who decides that? Like it's, there's a lot of politically driven labels here. And, um, and I think that's a real concern and that that is in the media are driving this, these labels and this division. And it's like, um, you know, we need more discernment out there. Like we need to, you know, discern what, right from wrong and um and like and and facts like you can't deny facts and um well you know this is the thing isn't it i mean if we if we follow the one narrative if you're only a person that watches the mainstream media then your narrative is going to be one fear-based factless in many cases because it's missing, it's not transparent, so they're not actually giving parents or people um, a chance to understand the bigger picture. And, you know, uh, it's, I can hear the passion in your voice, and I know I'm passionate about it, especially, you know, keep your hands off the kids. Uh, it's just, it's really interesting because I listen to a, a, a normal, well, let's call it a mainstream radio show uh, yesterday, and it said, get your kids vaccinated, it's tested, it's proven, it's safe. Mm. And if that's all you hear... Which is factually incorrect. <laughs> it's, or, and this is, this is what I'm getting at. If you hear that, that's all you hear, you're, as a parent, you're not going to be questioning. It's only when people make that sort of question, take that question a bit further and say, well, hang on, if everyone's saying this, where's the rest of it? It can't be just, you know, nothing is that easy. Mm, yeah you know and that's distorting the truth yeah I mean I think people a lot more people have woken up to um how the media are driving this and and then like who you know who owns them what what drives their decisions they're reporting and um but but there are a lot of people that aren't they're they're still you know it is gospel for some people and um yeah, especially people of my my dad's generation, for example. He, I'll never be able to reason with him because that is that he's always watched the news his whole life. That is yeah. that is what is happening in the world. What is happening on the news is what's happening in the world. And that's how I grew up. And I mean, my parents are the same. Uh, and and I grew up watching the news. And up until maybe eighteen months ago, when I really opened my eyes to to what was out there in the bigger picture. Um, mm. you know two maybe a bit more maybe two years ago when I started Supernal really was to try and give a different narrative to just mm. the one that's there and I've had to switch off because the absolute rubbish that they're spreading 
and mm. the, the lack of reporting. And, you know, then when you find out, uh, which came out of its freedom of information recently, that the media are getting tax cuts from the government to actually keep the narrative, that's when you start having to question, well, actually, who's got our better, mm. who is actually really caring about us, you know, in mm. that space? So, but also Pfizer as well. Like I, you know, they, they've got, um, they, they've got their fingers in pretty much everything. They, they've got the same people who own Pfizer own like News Hub and the various. Um, like I don't know specifically, but I know News Hub in New Zealand is owned by the same people who own Pfizer, and then Australia Media. Um, well, it's pretty much the same. I, I, I just don't know the specifics. Yeah, but. there are there are. Um, there are trails uh, that are available for people to chase down. They're not easily found. But that's one of the arguments of, you know, having this discussion. You know, you're talking about your dad's age. I actually had a discussion with um, some people last night and we were talking about this in a very open, honest conversation. And they had no idea of what's going on in Canberra. Absolutely no idea what was going on in Canberra. Wow. Yeah. They had no idea. See, because I don't watch the news, I don't know what people know. Like. To well, me, there's very on little on media. mainstream. Everything's happening in Canberra. <laughs> yeah, everything's everything's on mainstream is really it's talking around the outside edges of it. You know, they did a report, you know, live from Canberra the other day, and it went to a journo who talked about the fact that ScoMo's in trouble and the, the the stuff there, but no mention of of the nearly what is it, nearly a million people or something that are up in Canberra at the mm. moment, and that. That is very typical of people I'm talking to at the moment that they don't necessarily follow social media. Mm. Um, and and I've, you know, I'm blessed. I've got some people on the ground up in Canberra because I can't get there myself. And they're sending me imagery. And when the media reports, oh, you know, there was only a few hundred people there. And then you see the actual imagery that's being sent to me mm. um, by credible people. Uh, mm. It's totally different. And I yeah, think they're still the, controlling the narrative as much as they can, but that's falling apart. Like soon they just won't be able to cover it. Yeah. I think after this weekend, there might be a big break in that and they can't avoid that. For well, this is longer. the thing. So, yeah, so the, unlike us down here in Melbourne where Daniel Andrews thought it was okay to shoot people in the streets that were protesting. I've got a video of that. It's just the most horrendous thing I, I ever saw in my life. It's something what happened that... In Melbourne. It's something that I, as a, I'm born and bred in Melbourne, um, passionate about Melbourne, and it's something that I never, ever thought I would see happen um, on the streets of Melbourne where people no. are getting shot um, mm. and badly injured because yeah. of it. Uh, and with their, you know, I call them the stormtrooper squad that they had running right through the town that had absolutely nothing. Oh, I don't know who you brought in, but they, were, they weren't regular police. They... No, they weren't. They're part of the Safe Cities Project, which has all come out of China, which Dan Andrews signed up for us. Right. Um, so, heard, yeah. and, that's, and that's what ScoMo, actually ScoMo put a stop to that uh, probably three months ago now. I could be out by a month or two, uh, but ScoMo put a stop to that. And then um, Andrews has actually set it up some other stuff on the quiet, which is why we haven't seen the stormtroopers here for a little while. But then a lot of people I know that were protesting in Melbourne have gone up to Canberra. And right. so, you know, the protests here in Melbourne, I, they're not stalled that I'm aware of. Um, however, yeah, it's an interesting, it's, there is an interesting side to all of this. Yeah. Um, that is going to impact our kids. Yeah. And the, and well, I know a lot parents. of people moved away from Melbourne. That, yes. Didn't they? And, yeah. Yeah. Um, I, I think... Well, I can't remember the exact figures. I heard somewhere between thirty and fifty thousand people had left Victoria to go and live in other states. Wow! Um, which is which is interesting because Melbourne is dead. You know, mm. you, you, you'll see it again. You know, I, I watch some mainstream media stuff if I happen to catch it. Now I've got to be a little bit more aware than the average person in mm. what's going on. And you know, uh, Melbourne itself is dead. Melbourne is a dying place and wow, that's interesting. the amount of businesses that have shut down the amount of people that are out of work yeah you know, they'll fudge their you know facts and figures all they want but that's yeah. that is creating a, a scenario in melbourne where they're 
offering free shows. They're offering all wow. the stuff to try and That's get really people sad. back into town, into town. But mm-hmm. when you've got to go to work in there and you have to wear your mask and you have to do this and you have to do that, people are just saying enough's enough. Yeah, yeah. It's not surprising what's happened though. But um, yeah, now um, Mark McGowan's doing the same kind of, giving the same treatment to everyone in WA and, um, and they're cousins, by the way, can't you tell? <laughs> they're actually cousins. So right. that, uh, so um, it, it doesn't really surprise me the way they are, but they're all, I mean, you know, the Sindra, they're all the same. They're, they're, all, they're puppets, you know, having their pull strings, the it's strings pull thing. from above. And um, it's like, I don't know why Mark McGowan's leaving it t- till now to do this. It's like it's, it's like his, um, he's at last in line for his prize. You know, it's like whatever is in store for these leaders to play this out. Like there's something, there's something yeah. there. Well, I think and, the word I've heard is uh, April is when Dan Andrews is going to unleash another rollout of um, potential closures to unvaccinated people and start locking them in their house. The documents that I've seen certainly point towards that. Well, that would just kill Melbourne. Like people just will not tolerate Well, we're already there now. So yeah. you know, there are so many people that are just saying, I don't want it, but I've got to survive. I don't want it, but I've got to do this. Mm. My doctor's mm. told me I have to do this or else. Um, you know, there are people absolutely screaming, you know, I'm part of the hoodies page and pages and uh mm. they're, they're screaming. i know a few people from melbourne coming to canberra for this saturday mm-hmm. oh, quite a few so what happens um in canberra will, uh, will hopefully i think benefit all of australia i think and so and i've got to take my hat off to everybody that's there you know it is amazing what they're doing um, mm, i think we'll have double or triple numbers to last saturday <laughs> exactly so i've you know i've heard quite a few times at the moment in the last week that there's seems to be a bit of infighting between different groups that are all there but i think as hoodie put it this morning in a you know or yesterday in a video snippet that i saw it's like everybody you're all there for the same reasons don't fight each other because that's what the government want I Stand heard this. Together. I someone yeah. posted about like the, the division in Canberra. I was like, I've heard nothing about peace, love, and unity. How what division? I know yeah. exactly. They're all there for the same reason. It's like, so and I <laughs> come on, let's just get on with it. Like it's yeah, crazy. Exactly. To, mm. oh. And and look, um, I'm a spiritual person, not necessarily a religious person. But even I'm saying, you know, this is not going to be fixed with anger and violence. It's going to be no. fixed with love and caring mm, and understanding, sure. and being able to link arms without all the violence and the name calling and stuff like that. So, you know, it, you know, putting that word out there is really important that, you know, we don't want the violence to occur that has occurred in other cities. And yeah. I know they've tried to make it look like that in social media. Uh, oh, for sure. But right now, as we speak, there is a um, standoff between police and the public at the Beehive in New Zealand right now. Mm. Um, the masses of police, it's like they're waiting for a riot, but the people are just standing there, thousands of people just standing there, mm. because that is the biggest message we're trying to get across, like the, um, despite what the media are saying, like, oh, they're just, you know, it's violent and blah, blah, blah. It's, it's nothing, it's anything but, you know, people just want to um, get their freedoms back and they're doing it peacefully mm-hmm. and lovingly and they're unified. We're together on this. Yeah. Vaccinated and, or unvaccinated, you know, or unvaccinated, you know. Yeah, and it, it's all it's all groups. That I think, you know, you that one of the most powerful things, there's two powerful things that resonate in my memory and that's Tiananmen Square um, and the person walking out in front of the tank and we, and and. I already know what happened after that and around that, but also what's happened in in places like Singapore where they just stood linked arms, didn't make a sound, and they just Mm. block after block. block. So powerful. Two very powerful images. Mm. It's when it descends into the violence that we're giving into, you know, what the government's trying to do. And and if we're going to get these governments out and get better people in to look after us the way that we are supposed to be, in a democratic Mm. society, then yes, it makes it hard. But look, jumping back to uh, the sort of the the boys, your boys in particular, you mentioned that you're helping them to make informed decisions as best they can. So you're you're sort of helping them to be critical thinkers. Trying. Yeah, Mm. trying. They're 11. 
Mm. And if I think back to what I was like as an 11-year-old boy, yeah, I don't know how my mum didn't actually pull her hair out there and then. So the, the, the thing is, uh, as a parent, have you noticed any changes in their state of thinking, their mental health, for a want of a better way of putting it, about mask wearing and all that sort of stuff, in trepidation maybe, or um, trepidation in going back to school? Well, despite all the fear mongering about masks in schools, we've actually um, been okay with that. We they haven't they don't have to wear them in class, thank goodness. They don't have to wear them at all in school, which was not what we were told when before school went back. But that's a huge relief. So, but there are they see a lot of kids wearing masks. They know that they don't need to wear them. They don't. Um, they don't judge other people for wearing them they just um that they're not fearful they don't they don't um they just that they're very much like okay mummy doesn't want us to wear masks mummy doesn't want us to have the vaccination they don't they don't fully understand why um Mm. but um and i guess you know at their age they don't really need to know they just want to have fun and with all that lockdown Lockdown was not too bad for us. Um, I, in some respects, we were very lucky and um, they haven't been as effective as I'm sure many children have been. But, um, yeah, I just try to... They, they also know that, um, you know, Daddy has different views, Daddy watches the news, and um, we have very dif- different opinions about mm-hmm. what's happening and and so when the school gave us the rat tests um i sort of made a joke like you know i'm more inclined to stick it in a pineapple than to stick it up my kids noses and i think um he he said oh i will do them then i was like there's no point so we ended up doing one each with them and um that's it we've done no more i was like okay that's what you want to do you do that and um because you know, like uh, I'll, if my kids have symptoms, I'll I'll look after them as I always have. Keep them home, take care of them. Um, I don't need to stick these things up their noses and that school them, but you know, just the, the whole process that they're trying to enforce on us. So um, yeah, that has been. Um, so yeah, the the boys just kind of know, like, okay, this is what we're doing. Mummy doesn't want this, and that's that. Yeah. So yeah, I don't think they've been. They just want to, you know, play their PlayStation, watch TV, play soccer, and <laughs> yeah, and enjoy life. And yeah, I think what what I'm sort of reading into this is, it's just a lot of common sense approach to how you deal with sickness with your kids, which is how a lot of people would normally do it. However, we're seeing the evidence of people that are sending their kids to school sick because they have to go to work because they've told that, that they can't do this or they can't do that or, you know, they can't get a babysitter, you know, because maybe they're not available that day, uh, short notice. I think that that bigger picture of, of parenting when you have uh, kids that aren't well or kids that are struggling with things is really, really a tough one. Yeah. I mean, I've seen, we live in a fairly, you know, affluent area in Sydney and I've seen kids on the street that have been picked up by police. Like they're no older than my children, just picked up by the police because they're um, just doing, they've got nothing to do. I think one was under the influence of something, but he, I, he was taken away by the police and I just thought that is so sad. Like his parents are clearly... You know they've got a, they've got jobs to do and this is in the midst of lockdown and they had, you know jobs to do and obviously and it, I had reached a point where I think most parents were like I just can't care for these kids all day every day you know um, yeah because you've got to make money as well so um, I think it, it was really tough on a lot of families and we both work from home so that's why I say that you know we're lucky in many respects but um. I know for a lot of people, it's just not like that at all. It was yeah. really tough. Yeah, that's the thing. So in, in getting close to wrapping up, Bridget, for, for people that are in a relationship where the mum and dad don't see eye to eye on, on the topic or on any topics, really, you've got your two, two boys there that are sort of growing into people uh, and you've got, you understand that 
um, a lot of people are really struggling on, on a mental health issue way, parents as well as kids because of all the pressures. Is there some sort of suggestion you would offer to people to sort of say, look, try and move away from mainstream media, look for other sources? What, what are your thoughts there? What would you say to people, mums out there and dads out there about how to, to work their way through this sort of issue? Well, I think, you know, when it comes to a partnership, a relationship, a marriage, or when you've got two people getting their sources of information from two very different places, it just, you come head to head and you just cannot reason um, as hard as you try. It's just the most um, divisive, controversial topic at the moment. So um, I guess my advice would be to how to get through a marriage is to with this particular thing is to just not discuss it <laughs> unless you have to which has been um we had our first discussion many months ago when all the you know when this was just surfacing and things were getting pretty bad and um and we um that was that wasn't about the children the, the children's vaccination hadn't come in yet it was it was about me and my choice of not being vaccinated, my husband was upset because I wouldn't be able to travel. And, but I knew like, well, there's millions of people like me. So this won't be forever, but I'm prepared to set it out like to, you know, for the sake of a holiday, you know, how long will it be kind of thing. So he, um, anyway, then it came up about the children and it, we did have a, you know, repeated arguments. It was very distressing for me. I don't like confrontation. I, I get anxiety when it even we edge towards that topic. I just back off and can't discuss it. Um, anyway, so let's fast forward a few more months. And I think um, even though his source of information is from the media, Maybe something's coming from somewhere else, I don't know, but he has softened. He understands that there is some very different views in our world right now. We are divided. Um, and I think, I think we both kind of feel lucky that we've made it this far in our marriage without things um, being too disruptive. And I think um, I find email helpful if you really need to discuss something i find email um can be quite helpful because if you are oh, just you know when in the same room and it gets all heated and it's very hard to keep it you know tame and um so for someone to look over an email maybe watch a video um that that can and then di digest it and then respond um that can be helpful we've kind of done a bit of that um we were actually both interviewed by news.com. They wanted a, um, to, a couple of to different views. Bad mistake, don't speak to journalists. Totally minced up that um, interview. And, um, but yeah, I think um, with regard to just um, getting through it and for a relationship, yeah, that's all, that's, that's, that's how we've done it. And that's all I can, um, and just, um, yeah, just, oh, I don't know. Like that, that is really my best um, advice is to not, ma not make a discussion, like an everyday discussion. Um, and um, be, be intentional about, you know, like if you do have to have a discussion to say about children, be intentional. Like who am I going to be in this discussion rather than going and like all guns blazing and it's, you know, not going to go well. Yeah. So... That's probably that's probably a really good piece of advice to, to, to sort of suggest to people is be armed, be prepared, know what you what you're trying to achieve, and put the guns away. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because yeah, like yeah. we're not going to get anywhere like that. No. Whether it's one on one or like millions of us against yeah a government force. Yeah, slow, a slow burn in education is really hard for a lot of people, especially people that are. In, in a in a life that stops them from looking at both sides of a of a discussion like this because it is such a major discussion and you know it is anything you do as as and I the same you know coming from a, a divorced 
relationship, um, you know, with three kids, anything you do as parents ultimately filters down to how those children respond. And if your children are, uh, are very much empathetic, which most nearly all kids are, mm. then all of a sudden you're impacting their energetic beings, their mm. direction. Mm, they feed off everything. Yeah. And they do. And, and so one of the, the, the big decisions we made very early on in, in the marriage breakup was no heated discussions in front of the children, full mm. stop. Yeah. No ifs, yeah. no buts. Mm. And, you know, and, you know, nearly 25, 26, 27 years later, the, the kids love their mum as much as they love myself and my partner. And yeah. their mum and I still get on great. So does my partner. So, I, I, you know, I would encourage all parents to be in that space as best they possibly can. And, and mm. you know, for the benefit of the kids, not, not really rip into each other in front of them because that's where they learn behaviours that aren't acceptable uh, in yeah. real terms, especially boys, you know, um, and and the link towards domestic violence and all that sort of stuff into the future. Yeah, so, for yeah, sure, because there's a great. lot of situations that are um, not like that right now. And, mm. yeah. Yeah, so I think that's, that's a great piece of advice. Well, look, Bridget, uh, thank you for joining Supernal. And, and oh, thank you for having me. I hope that was... Um, Useful information. No, I, look, it's it's again, it's a difference of uh, uh, of understanding. You know, uh, what we're looking for is not necessarily to put one side against the other because that's not what we tend to do. What we tend to do is look at um, people's real stories, and that's what Supernal is all about. So, um, we appreciate your time and your effort. Oh. Uh, Thank you very much. You're welcome. So uh, for, for people watching this video, supernalmagazineaustralia.com.au is the website, the magazine, the videos, the podcasts, and Supernal Radio, all available free online 24-7. Uh, so check it out. And, um, and thank you very much. Thank you.